Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at cohesion of water, surface tension, adhesion of water, and then we'll finish with a summary. So water actually undergoes a force called cohesion, whereby water molecules stick together. So remember that water is a polar molecule, and therefore it has uneven charge over it. And this impacts the way that water flows as a liquid. And it's due to the many hydrogen bonds which exist between the water molecules. So just to recap, remember the water molecules are connected to each other, via a series of hydrogen bonds between parts of the molecules to other parts of the molecules. So usually that's between a positively charged hydrogen atom to negatively charged oxygen atoms. And the hydrogen bonds are basically the sticking force which is allowing the water molecules to be attracted to each other and so they tend to stick together as a kind of mass. And we call this overall force and sticking together cohesion. So if water molecules in a bunch came together with another bunch, because of these hydrogen bonds which form between them, they end up sticking together in cohesion. So by definition, cohesion is the attraction between molecules of the same type. And in this case, we're talking about water molecules, each being attracted to each other via a hydrogen bond. And overall, all of these hydrogen bonds connecting all of the water molecules in a kind of network are the cohesive properties that we see. You can see this happening in everyday life. You can see it by the behaviour of a water droplet which is gripping to something hanging over an area and then you can see how it falls. So if we were to represent this diagram whereby this was the progress of time and the gravity is pulling on the droplet towards the surface of the earth, eventually the droplet will form this kind of stalk where the mass of the drop is falling and eventually it will separate. But you can see that the water is still sticking to each other through cohesion. So even though this droplet is being pulled by gravity and wants to separate, you still have this cohesion going on at very late stages until finally it separates. But because of these cohesive forces, it only really separates when the gravity influence has become so strong. So it does like to stick together. You can compare this with other liquids like, for example, oil, which is a liquid. And oil molecules don't have any of these hydrogen bonds between the molecules. They may have other intermolecular forces, but they don't have hydrogen bonds. So the cohesion is a lot less, and they separate much faster. So again, with the progress of time, and the pull of gravity, the cohesion is a lot less, and so it separates much quicker. So cohesion also affects the way that water moves through a particular area. If you take water out of the end of a tube, the water molecules that are behind end up following this to replace what was lost. And the reason for this, again, is cohesion. So all of these water molecules, remember, are bound by hydrogen bonds. So if you were to take some water out of a tube, the cohesion means that this pulls the water molecules towards where they're being taken from. So all of the water ends up flowing from one end to the other. This is really important in plants because plants have to have water being transported up through their bodies. And they draw the water up xylem vessels in a continuous stream against gravity. So what's happening at the leaves is that water is leaving the leaf through transpiration and this is creating a pull on the xylem vessels for water to keep going up. And so as it's pulling the top water molecules, because of cohesion, this lower set of water molecules get pulled up to replace it. So it's a continuous stream up the xylem. And this kind of vessel will be running all the way up the stem. And then at the roots, the water rushes into the roots to replace this and again is driven up by this cohesion. So it's a continuous stream of water. Cohesion doesn't just affect the way that water moves, it affects the property it has at its surface as well. So the cohesive property of water results in unique behaviour of water where it interfaces with the air. So liquid water and air won't mix, they will form either bubbles or they will separate out. So what we tend to have is this interface or this boundary between the air, where we've got things like oxygen and carbon dioxide, and the water itself. So we can think of this as a kind of interface. And you can consider this to be, for example, the surface of a puddle or the edge of a droplet. The ones at the surface of the water are more attracted to those other water molecules around it than they are to any of the molecules in the air. So if we have another interface here between water and air, the intermolecular forces between the top water molecules and the air molecules are quite weak, but they are there. But the ones between the water molecules at the surface and the water molecules around and underneath them are much, much stronger. So it's almost like it's trying to stick together and not break free into the air. 
because of this, we've got this uneven distribution of attraction. And what it's trying to do is pull the water molecules inwards back into the body of water towards the water below. So then the surface of the water is actually placed under quite a lot of tension. So imagine that all of the water is being forced to the ones below them. It's going to create a nice sort of level of tension across those at the top, forming this kind of tense layer. The way that you can think of this is that the tension results in this kind of thin skin of water on the top of the surface, still made of water, but it tends to be very tense compared to that underneath. And it's actually kind of acting as a barrier, which is harder to break through. So here we have the surface of the water. And because these surface water molecules are being pulled in more strongly than they are to the air molecules, they form this tense layer on top. And because of this, it actually provides a habitat. The surface of the water can act as a habitat for insects, such as pond skaters, where the pond skater can actually sit on the water to find other insects. And so the water surface tension is a good resting area for these insects. So as well as cohesion of water, we have another force at work known as adhesion. The water molecules stick together with cohesion, but they don't only stick to themselves. They also stick to other molecules in a process called adhesion. So here, just to illustrate this, cohesion lies between the water molecules, sticking them together as a group. If we have connection to other molecules, we have adhesion, and this can happen in various places. So the difference between adhesion and cohesion is that adhesion is the attraction between non-alike molecules, whereas cohesion was talking about alike molecules. So water shows these adhesive properties if it's ever made in contact and attracted to another polar or charged surface. So in order to be attracted to this surface, it must be polar or charged. So it doesn't do this to non-polar surfaces. And you can see this quite clearly if you use some straws. So the behavior of water in a narrow glass straw shows adhesion. So if we take this straw here, number one, what we see is that water is actually being sucked up the tube, even though gravity is acting in this direction. And this is without any extra help. And the reason for this is because the glass tube is polar. It's made up of molecules which are polar and therefore the water gets attracted to it. And it kind of sucks up the water in the force we describe as capillary action because it kind of looks like the vessel of a capillary in the blood system. What you'll notice is that as the tubes get narrower, the amount of adhesion increases because they actually reach a greater height, even though they're at the same level in the water bath. So then the tube number three is the narrowest tube, you get the highest level of adhesion. And this is because there's more surface in contact with the water, and therefore there's more to stick to. But adhesion is happening in all of them, because the glass is polar and so is the water. And bearing in mind, talking about cohesion from before, we also have that at work as well, because as the top ones get pulled into the capillary, the bottom ones behind it have to follow, because all of water is stuck together due to cohesion. So the water molecules adhere to the polar glass, and so they rise up the straws against gravity. So this is the process of capillary action. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.